Uh, yeah, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. This is my second attempt at recording this. Um, yeah, so I've got three things that are heavy uh, on my heart and not one of the three of these is being even mentioned in the mainstream media. So that tells you something. So the first thing I want to talk about is some uh, events that I've become aware of uh, over the last few days. There's been uh, massive uh, troops uh, at the border with, uh, with the breakaway republics of, uh, of the Donbass. But then there was news today. Uh, now I've been getting this from Hal Turner. He's actually been quite good on this. There's a very good uh, website in Greece that's been talking about this. And of course, there's been stuff on Twitter. So I'll just go through a few things here. This is the information I have today. So tanks and other heavy armor is on the move in Grodno in Belarus, moving towards the borders of Poland and Lithuania. These tanks are on city streets moving in the open. And this is not a small deployment. Um, what we've got is basically uh, the entire country of Belarus has mechanized, two mechanized divisions and they're both about 30,000 troops and they've been mobilized. And the other important thing to report on this is that Belarus has ejected the Polish ambassador from their country today. So uh, this, is, this is, of course, interpretation. This is not just the bare facts. But today's move of armor is obviously making sure that NATO reinforcements come into uh, cannot come into the country of Ukraine um, from Poland, Lithuania. So Hal Turner is saying that this is probably going to be a very big war uh, because the people of Lugansk and Donetsk um, don't want to, they want to leave Ukraine and join Russia. So he's saying that uh, Ukraine has uh, mass 90,000 troops, 450 tanks and 800 pieces of artillery and more on the borders of the two obelisks. So all of this uh, conflict was relatively uh, quiet over, f over the last four years and it's just exploded again along with Syria uh, in the two months uh, since Joe Biden came to power. So make of that uh, what you will. Uh, so the second thing was um, that I've just got round to watching a documentary a video made by uh, uh, geoengineeringwatch.org. Um, it's a two hour video. Uh, the first half was kind of went over some of the things that I sort of know. But the, uh, the second half was really something new. And he had various interviews, very good interviews with people showing research uh, that they've managed to do flying a, uh, a plane up into, I think, the 30,000 feet foot altitude where they managed to take air samples and they found um, various heavy metals, iron, but most particularly uh, aluminum, uh, which they managed to find when they, when, when they analyzed the results. And he also goes into various scientific papers which shows, you know, that there's uh, large amounts of plastic uh, raining down uh, in Siberia and plastic in the, in the Himalayas. And you have to ask, well, how did it get up there? Um, and then there's a the whole question about uh, aluminum, bees have it, 
It's getting into the brains of young people uh, and it's ca causing terrible, terrible conditions. So there's a lot in this movie and I really do suggest that you have a look. In addition, I'm just going to put something on my blog which hones in a little bit on some of the scientific papers that are cited in the, in the film. So the third thing is uh, about the uh, mass injection of people. Uh, we have some idea of kind of what's in the uh, Pfizer and Moderna uh, products and there seem to be a lot of problems with AstraZeneca as well. But what was really um, interesting and alarming is that a, a Belgian vaccinologist who's worked for Gavi and for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and he's very pro-vaccine. Uh, but he, he says really that using uh, this is the wrong weapon in this particular war, uh, and it's a mistake to use the mass injection of people uh, in the midst of a pandemic and this is having uh, will have unintended consequences to put it mildly uh, so he's saying that in the midst of a pandemic whatever you come up with it's going to be suboptimal uh, it does it, it never it can never be a match for what's out there because it's changing so quickly and one of the reasons why it's uh, changing so quickly is because of the uh, of the policies that have been used um, basically not allowing the virus to kind of rip through the population and for people to utilize their uh, their natural immunity so that means that with the mass injection of people um, this brings their resistance down to practically zero at a time when the viral load is is becoming greater and greater. So that's his interpretation. And uh, there's absolutely silence from the mainstream. There's a few videos up, discussions between scientists, and mostly it's been the, uh, the anti-movement that's been discussing this. Some of them have really taken it on. Others have attacked him on a sort of ad hominem basis of who he's worked for and who he is. Uh, but having done some very basic medical, Western medical training as part of my uh, training to be a um, practitioner of Chinese medicine, it really makes makes sense and it and it resonates with what my understanding of the human immune system as opposed to what we're, uh, we're, we're being told. So I'm going to put uh, uh, links to relevant material in the description box below and I hope you'll uh, go and have a look. Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.